take, uh, I don't know, probably 15 or some shit. Rebuilding a remote, the uh, redneck way. Mason jar lid to hold your screws, which is, uh, well, yeah, holding your drink. The remote, which I've already split. One of them nail files, well, the ex-woman left behind. Got two screwdrivers, great for prying. Her pliers, which are nicely coated, and when they hit you, it uh, bounces off because they're so purdy. And then that big hammer, that you know, that's all that you bring in the house, just for fear of getting hit. Anyways, if you haven't never tore one of these apart, basically what you do is, well, get rid of them damn batteries because they're in the way. Now there's uh, usually Phillips, but I'm sure they're getting different now. And uh, look around under stickers, fill around for holes, that fuckers, they like to hide that shit because, well, if everybody could do it, it wouldn't be a business. I start at a corner usually close to the battery because you can see what's going on. Once you get in there and get it open just a touch, you get up underneath there. I know you can't see it and that's why you need to practice on someone else's remote before you tear something you actually paid money for. I get all my shit from the dump, well, that's just the way we do it. I got my tape in case I need to mark parts out and my uh, marker. And so anyways, once you get into this thing, you can throw the plastic off to the side because, well, if you can't figure out what order that went in, well, you probably shouldn't be tearing shit apart in the first place. Uh, the remote snapped together, like I said. Um, the first piece that, take the bottom off. You want to leave the, the front intact. The first piece is the most important. It's the contacts, or, well, the contacts or the rubber, we'll get to that. It's the, uh, no, I'm not an electrician, I'm, I work with wood. It's tear this shit apart because, well, too cheap to go buy anymore. Here's your contact. Basically, I, I believe it's a, some kind of metallic form. And what happens is it gets dirty. Pretty simple, self-explanatory. Take your nail file. I don't use alcohol. Well, there it is. So anyways, you're gonna run it over. Nice and smooth, you'll see the surface shine. And there'll be them buttons that you know you can't hit, and them are gonna be the black ones. You just go ahead and slightly buff it. If your woman hasn't used her nail file for the last fucking year, you need to go ahead and uh, rub it on something that'll dull it down a little bit so it's not so abrasive. The chances of you getting through this, uh, the finished coat they got on here down to the uh, connections running from here to there and wherever the hell else they go, is pretty slim to none. <clears throat> So anyways, you go ahead and polish it up real nice. You'll take your time. It does take a little bit, but when you got the beer or whiskey or whatever the hell you're drinking. Oh, we, we had these cups at my sister's wedding. Sister-in-law. They came with the candlestick and the masonry, and when you got all drunk, you just put the lid on and you could slosh around all night and well, you carry your drink around. It's pretty cool. Well, during the night, they broke. I had a nipple all night, and that's one nipple I didn't have to pay for. Well, in so many words, I had to watch my brother get married. So anyways, you know, that's pretty much it. I mean, you put the son bitch back together when you're done, and you'll know if you didn't do the sanding right, because, well, the son bitch won't, the button won't work. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. Redneck way. Get her done. And no, no, get her drunk. Oh, and don't forget, there's the way. Shiny new toilet seat, and if your girlfriend don't want to sit on that without a paper bag or plastic bag, send her to the curb.